So welcome to this video on candlestick patterns. I'm Adam Koo, and in this video, I'm going to show you the most powerful candlestick patterns I use to find high probability entries or to supplement my trades. So before that, uh, pause the video, read the disclaimer, and once you're done, let's carry on. Okay, great. So when we look at a stock, as you know, we look at the chart to ascertain the probability of where the price is going to go. Is it on an uptrend? Is it on a downtrend? Is it on a consolidation? But besides looking at the trends, we can also look at the candlesticks that make up the price action because the candlestick pattern tells us on a day-to-day -day basis the sentiment of the market. Is it more bullish? Is it more bearish? And it helps to fine-tune our entries more precisely. So we enter when all the stars are aligned on a bullish momentum and short on a bearish momentum. So if you look at the price chart, I like to use candlestick charts. So the chart is made up of all these candlestick patterns and you can choose uh, any duration. I prefer to use daily candles, which means every candle you see represents one trading day. So how do you read these candles? A quick revision if you're new to this. So when you look at a candlestick, it can be a bullish candle, which is white or green in some charts, or a bearish candle, which is red or black, okay? So first, let's look at a bullish candle. A bullish candle happens when you have got a bullish day, which means that on this day, the market closed higher than it's open. So in other words, the market opened here at, say, $10. And by the end of the trading day, it closed higher than the open at, say, uh, $12. So once you have that, you've got a bullish candle, which is white or green. And this is what we call the body of the candle. So the body of the candle tells us the open versus the close of the day. So for bullish candle, we open at the bottom of the body, we close at the top of the body. Now, during the day, the price could go to a certain high point. We call that the day high, which could be, for example, $15. Okay, and it may go to as low as, say, $9. We call that the day low. So the day high and the day low are denoted by these shadows. So the upper shadow and the lower shadow, okay? So you've got the shadows and a body. Now, if you take the top of the upper shadow to the bottom of the lower shadow, the entire length is called the range of the candle, the range of the candle, okay? So that's how you read a bullish candle. Now, you get a bearish candle when it's a bearish day. A bearish day is when the price closes lower than the opening price of the day. So in that case, the price opens here at say $10 in the morning and closes at $8. So when that happens, you've got a bearish candle, red candle or black candle, okay? So once again, the, uh, the body of the candle shows us the open versus the closing price. That's the body of the candle. And the upper shadow tells us where's the day high, so let's say it's at 11, and the lower shadow tells us the day low, say at $7. So once again, you've got a body, upper shadow, lower shadow, and the length from the top of the upper shadow to the bottom is called the range of the candle. So please remember all these terms. Okay, so once again, bullish candle, open here, close there. That's the high, that's the low. Bearish candle opens there, closes there. That's the top and that's the bottom. Okay. Now when you look at charts, the, the candles don't all look like this. It's like not everyone looks like the same shape. Okay. Some are fatter, some are thinner, some are taller, some are shorter. So depending on what the candle looks like, the shape of the body and the shadows, it tells us about the bearishness or bullishness of that day's sentiment that helps us to make better decisions. So let's take a closer look at what I'm talking about. Now, 
These are specific uh, candle shapes that I find powerful and reliable. The first one are what I call bullish pin bars. Okay, so this one, this one, this one, these, all four of them are bullish pin bars. Why? They look like pins. Okay, what do they all have in common? Number one, they all have small bodies, right? So there's a body, body. And in this case, you can see there is no body. Why? Because the open and the closing price is the same price. So it's like the body is like one line. Same with this one. Okay. Next, notice all four candles have long lower shadows. Long lower shadows. And the lower shadow makes up two-thirds of the entire range of the candle. So if you have got these conditions, it's known as a bullish pin bar. Now, bullish pin bars are bullish reversal patterns. What does it mean? Okay, When you see a series of candles coming down, and you see one of these bullish pin bars, there's a high probability that the price will reverse upwards, and we look to go long after the bullish pin bar. Now, what's important to understand is that candlestick patterns by itself is not reliable unless in the right context. That means they must appear at the right location. So, a bullish pin bar is only bullish and reliable when it's at a certain kind of support level. When it is at a support level. And ideally, the lower shadow should cut below this support line, which is very often a moving average, okay? And it should be on an uptrend, ideally. Okay, so I repeat once again, a bullish pin bar has the highest probability of, you know, the price going up when it's at a support line on an uptrend, okay? So let's take a look at some examples over here. Okay, so look at this chart. Can you uh, kind of tell me, or can you can you find where are the bullish pin bars? All right, take a look, and I'll show you, show you the answers in a while. Do you see one over here? That's a bullish pin. Okay. So question: Does it appear on an uptrend? Yes. Why? The fifty moving average is above the one fifty moving average. Right. It's an uptrend, and it's at the support of an uptrend because it's being supported by this moving average. So this is a powerful pattern. After a series of candles coming down, you've got this bullish uh, pin bar, high chance it's going to go up, which it did. Okay? Do you find another one over here? That's another bullish pin. Again, does it appear on the, on the uptrend? Yes, check. So you want it to appear on the uptrend, and it should be at a certain kind of support level. In this case, it is testing the 20 moving average support and the 50 moving average support. So you could do a buy once you see this bullish candle, boom, it goes up. Can you see that? Now, what's the psychology behind it? Why does it work? Not all the time, but often. Here's the psychology. Now, let's look once again at a bullish pin bar. You've got a small body, and a long lower shadow, okay? Now, it doesn't matter the color of the candle. It could be green, it could be red, black, blue, purple, it doesn't matter. The shape is what matters, okay? Now, here's a psychology behind it. What happens, what this candle is telling you is that on this day, the price opened here or here, doesn't matter, right? And during the day, the bears push the price down, going down, going down, going down, going down, going down, right? So everyone thinks the price is going to go down, right? But the bulls start to push the price back up. The bulls push it up, push it up, push it up, push it up, push it up. And by the end of the day, it closes way above its lows. What does it tell you? It tells you that the bulls were able to gain control of the stock and close the price higher. So the bulls took control. So because the bulls took control of this stock, there's a high probability the price will reverse up the next day. Again, it must appear ideally on an uptrend at a support level. 
for it to be more reliable, okay? Great. Now, here's the opposite of a bullish pin bar, the bearish pin bar. So the bearish pin is the opposite of the bullish pin. So in this case, same thing with a small body. It's going to have a small body or no body at all where the open and close are the same price. But they all have very long upper shadows, right? Can you see this long upper shadow there? And what is considered long? The upper shadow must make up two-thirds of the range of the entire candle. Then it's a bearish pin bar. So, and it, again, it must appear at the right location. Okay, ideally, you want to see a series of candles going up. And then you see the bearish pin bar, one of the four of them. And then you anticipate it will come back down again. Again, when is it the most reliable? It's the most reliable when it appears on a downtrend. Okay, so the trend has to be down and it should appear at the top of the downtrend. When it is hitting some kind of resistance. Right, like a resistance line or a moving average where the upper shadow kind of like cuts through the resistance, that's a high probability short. So let's look at some charts. And again, before that, let me talk about the psychology behind it. Why does it kind of work? Okay, think about it this way on a particular day, the price opens here or here, doesn't matter. So again, like the bullish pin, the color doesn't matter. It can be green, white, red, or black, okay? Now, during the day, the bulls push the price up. It's going up, it's going up, it's going up, right? Bullish, 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 right? Going up, going up. But halfway during the day, the bears take control and push the price down. And by the end of the day, it has closed much lower than the high. That tells you that bears have taken control of this stock and are going to push it down the next day. Hence, it tends to reverse back down. Okay, but again, it has to be in the right location. Let's take a look at where it appears on a chart. So this is a chart. Can you identify the bearish pin bar? Take a look and see if you can identify it. Can you see it? There you go. <clears throat> Let me draw it again. Uh, so that's a bearish pin bar, okay? So you can see that it has appeared, okay, on a downtrend. So this is a downtrend, as you can see, right? Because the 50 moving average below the 150, okay, is a downtrend and it's appearing at a resistance level, which is the 50 moving average, right? So after that, you can take a bet it's going to go down. Okay, so now you understand the bullish pin bar and the bearish pin bar. That's my first favorite candlestick pattern. In fact, one of the most powerful ones I use most of the time, right? The second one we're going to look at are called tweezer bottoms and tweezer tops. Now, don't worry about the names. The names are not important. What's important is when you look at them, you have to understand what they represent. Are they bullish or bearish reversal patterns? Now, um, tweezer bottoms... Uh, as the name suggests, uh, tend to appear at the bottom of a trend, right? So what you see is you see candles coming down, and then you see these two, and then we anticipate a reversal going up, okay? Now, how do you identify these? Okay, so tweezer bottoms are basically, you see a bearish candle, okay, with a pretty a large body and small upper and lower shadows, okay? And then after this, you see an identical looking candle that's the opposite color. So the bearish candle is followed by a bullish candle, all right? And this is a reversal pattern. Now, why does this work? Now, the reason is because a bearish candle plus a bullish candle of the same size equals to a 
bullish pin bar. That's right. In fact, I call this a synthetic bullish pin bar. A synthetic, okay? Now, let me explain how this works. Let me repeat. See. You have a bearish candle. Uh, okay. So, this is a bearish. Okay, I thought, let, me, let me draw it again, right? So, you have a bearish candle over there. Like that. And then you have got a bullish candle. Okay. Now, if you were to combine these two together, what you get? Let me explain. Okay. So what happens is that when you look at a bearish candle, it opens here and closes here. Is that correct? Good. So it opens here, it opens here, so that's my opening price, okay? That's my opening price. Now, it closes here, correct? Now, where does the bullish candle open? It opens here, and it closes here. So if I combine these two candlesticks together, that means it opens here, right? And it closes here. So this plus this equals to this, where the open and the close are the same price, all right? And the high is here. And the low is here. So when you see these two, what you're really looking at is you're looking at this, all right? So it's the same thing. Hence, it tends to reverse back up. But once again, it must appear in the right location. It should appear on an uptrend, ideally, and at a support level on the uptrend. Now, when you look at these things called tweezer tops, it's the opposite, right? So this is normally found at the top of a trend. So again, you see the candles going up, and you see these two at a resistance level, okay, on a resistance, and the overall trend is down, so the small trend is up, but the big trend is down. That's what I mean, okay? And then you can anticipate it's going to go down. Why? Because what do these two represent again? It represents that it's the open, right? It's open here, so opens here, right? Then it closes here. Then it opens here and it closes here. So if you combine these two, it means it opens here, and closes here, which means the open and the close are the same price. So that's one line. That's the high represented by the long upper shadow, and that's the low. So once again, these two equals to a bearish pin bar. Got it? That's how it works. Okay, so let's look at a chart, and can you identify uh, where the tweezer bottoms or the tweezer tops? Can you see it? There you go. Right over here. Okay? So again, does it appear in the right context, in the right uh, location? Yes, because is it on an uptrend? Yes, it's on an uptrend. Why? Because you can see that the 50, okay, uh, over here is still sloping up. The 150 is sloping up. Although the 50 is below the 150, but they're both still sloping up, so it's still considered an uptrend. Okay, it's still considered an uptrend. And the price, it's not below the 200 moving average. In fact, it is testing the 200 moving average. And the 200 moving average, the red line, is still sloping up. So it's a confirmed uptrend. So it's on a medium, long-term uptrend. But it's on a short-term downtrend here. With a series of candles going down, and you see this pattern, which is equals to this bullish pin, right? And it's at a support level, beautiful. You can buy and take the trade all the way up. Let's move on to the third candlestick pattern. Now, this one is one of my favorites. And I don't think many people teach this or you can read this in many places, right? So it's a secret, okay? But it's really powerful. This candlestick pattern is called the one white soldier 
for bullish and the one black crow for bearish, okay? So let me explain the one white soldier. This green uh, candle you see here, or this um, bullish candle, of course it could be white in Think or Swim, okay? This is a one white soldier. How does it qualify? Okay, A one white soldier is a bullish candle that opens above the close of the previous day's bearish candle. So what this means is that this can only be a one white soldier if the previous day's candle is bearish. So this must be a bearish candle. If it's a bullish candle, this can't be a white, one white soldier. Okay, So it's going to be a bearish candle. Now, this bullish candle must open, right? This is the open, right? It's the opening price. Must open above the close of the previous day's candle. So this is the open of the bearish candle. This is the close. So what it's saying is that it must open above the close of the previous day's bearish candle. So check. Next, this bullish candle must close above the open of the previous day's bearish candle. So it must close above the open of the previous day's bearish candle. Okay, So this makes a one white soldier. Now, some people may say, hey, can it have shadows? Yeah, sure, of course, you can have shadows here, shadows here, shadows here, shadows here. No worries. Yeah, But ideally, you want um, this low of this one white soldier to be higher than the low of the previous day's bearish candle. Okay, and again, ideally, you want the high to be higher than the previous bearish candle's high as well. Okay, so higher highs and higher lows. So this is a one white soldier. And again, when you see this, it's a very powerful pattern that the price is going to go up, especially if you see a series of uh, down candles and you see this pattern, you look to go long. But again, it must be found in the right context, in the right location. It should be found on an uptrend. Ideally on an uptrend and at a certain support level. So it should be on a certain moving average or support level. Got it? Okay. Next, let's look at one black crow. The one black crow is the opposite. So one black crow is you're looking at a series of candles going up. And you see this one, uh, one black crow pattern, which is this guy, and you look to go short, okay? Now, what's a one black crow? A one black crow is a bearish candle, this one, that opens below the close of the previous day's bullish candle. So, for this to be a one white, sorry, for this to be a one black crow, the previous day has to be, has to be a bullish candle, all right? So, this has to be a bullish candle has to be. If it's a bearish candle, then this cannot be a one black crow. Okay? So, this bearish candle must open. So, that's the open here and that's the close, right? So, it must open below the close of the previous day's bullish candle. So, this bullish candle opens here and closes here, right? So, the open must be lower than the close of this bullish candle check. Next, the bearish candle must close, there's the close, below the open of the previous day's bullish candle. So this close must be lower than this open. Okay, hence you have got this uh, pattern over here. So again, you can have shadows like that, you can have shadows, no problem, okay, shadows. Uh, but again, you should make lower lows, ideally, and lower, or rather lower highs and lower lows, okay. So once you've got this, we can take a shot. So ideally, again, this pattern should be found at a resistance level. Okay, and ideally, uh, although it's maybe on a short-term uptrend over there, but the overall trend should be going down for it to be more reliable. So let's take a look at this chart. Okay, can you find the one white soldier? Take a minute, pause the video, find it, and I'll show you where it is. 
Did you find it? There. There's your one white soldier. Can you see that? Okay, why? Because the previous candle is bearish. That's the first condition. Previous has to be bearish. Okay? What else? Alright, it must open above the close of the previous day's candle. And it must close above the open of the previous day's candle. Again, price making higher highs, higher lows. Perfect. Perfect combination. Okay? Now, next thing. Is it in the right location? Is it on an uptrend? Yes, the 50 is above the 150. And it's at a support level. It's being supported by the 50. Boom! We can go along and take the trade going up. Okay, so that's one over there. You find another one. Is there another one? You see another one? No, I currently find another one. Okay, now you may say, hey, um, could this be a one white soldier? Yeah, because it's a bearish candle and followed by a one white soldier over there. So yes, this is a one white soldier. It's a one white soldier over here. Um, but would you have taken the trade? No. Why? Because when you see a one white soldier, you put a buy order five cents above and the stop loss can be here. So the next day, it didn't go above this high, this would not have got, gotten triggered, so you not enter the trade. But in this case, you put a buy order 5 cents above the high of this candle, and the stop loss 5 cents below the, the, the swing low over here, and the next day it got triggered and you would have been in the trade very nicely. Okay. Now, you can argue that this is also a one white soldier. Okay. But once again, you put a buy order here, stop loss here. The next day, it never got triggered. All right, so this is the only one that got triggered. The rest were one white soldiers that did not get triggered. You would not have taken the trade anyway. Okay, now, how about this one? Can you find the one black crow? One black crow. Again, pause the video, see if you can find it, all right? Okay, do you find the one black crow? There's your one black crow. Why? Because the previous day's candle was bullish. Okay, and this one black crow, it opens below the close of the previous day's candle and closes below the open of the previous day's candle. Right? It makes a lower high and a lower low. Boom, it's a one black crow. So next, is it on a downtrend? Yes, 50 below 150 on a downtrend. Is it at a resistance level? Yes, it's at a resistance, which is a 50 moving average. So when you see that, you could put a sell order here, five cents below the low of this candle. You can use a sell stop limit order. Your stop loss could be here, which is a buy stop order. The next day gets triggered and boom, you're making money going down. Okay, so that's a one black crow. Can you find another one black crow? This is another one black crow, right? Because the previous day's candle was bullish and this guy opens again below the close and closes, uh, and closes below the open, yeah? And, uh, but I wouldn't have taken this trade because uh, by the time I sell over here and my stop loss is here, um, the one hour may be a bit big, so may not be a nice risk to return ratio. But it's a one black crow nonetheless, okay? Technically speaking. Now let's look at the next pattern, which is the morning star and the evening star. So the morning star is a bullish reversal pattern. And again, it happens after a series of down candles. So a morning star consists of three candles in a specific combination. First candle, number one, is a big bearish candle. Now, following the big bearish candle, you want to see a small candle. Now, this candle can be bullish or bearish. It doesn't matter. But you want it to be a small candle. Now, you may say, how small is small? 
Well, small is in relation to the other candles. So it's kind of relative, yeah? And it's best if this candle has a small body with upper and lower shadows that are more or less the same length. Now that's ideal, it's not a must, but it's ideal because what we want to see is we want to see indecision, like I'm not sure where to go. See, when it's a long bearish candle, the market's bearish, we're going to go down, right? And then suddenly the market goes, well, I'm not sure now, okay? So you want it to become like indecision candle, okay? Uh, and what's important is that this candle too should be a gap down from candle one. Now what does a gap down mean? So if you look at a bearish candle, it opens here, over here, at the top of the body, right? And it closes over here, right? So this is the closing price, say this is, you know, $5, okay? Now the next day, if it opens at $5, there's no gap. But if the next day, it opens at, uh, say, $4, there's a gap between the previous day's close and the current day's open, there's a gap of a dollar. So you want to see a gap down. And you want to see, a again, a small indecision candle. Okay? And that's candle two. And after this indecision candle, the next day you want to see a gap up. So again, for example, this could be a, a bearish candle, for example. So it opens there. It closes at, say, um, $3, for example. But the next day, on day three, it opens at, you know, um, five fifty, for example. It opens here. So again, there's a gap, right? And we want this candle tree to be a bullish candle that closes at least more than fifty percent of this bearish candle. So imagine if it closes uh, here, it'd be exactly fifty percent. Right of the can of the bearish candles range, okay. But in this case, it closed over here, which is kind of like um, eighty percent. So that's really good, okay. So when you have this combination, it's a very powerful reversal pattern, and you can look to go long by placing a buy stop limit order, maybe five cents above this candle, right? Buy order over here, and a stop loss five cents below the low of this candle. So that's your stop loss over there. And if the next day it continues going up, your order will get triggered and you'll be in the trade. So the, what we call this a morning star pattern. Okay, so once again, when does it when does it have the highest probability of success? When it's found at a support level. Okay, and ideally it should be on an uptrend. Okay, it should be on, a, on an uptrend. So it's following the trend, but it's a temporary dip on the uptrend. So the opposite of the morning star is the, the evening star. And the evening star is a bearish uh, reversal pattern. So in this case, we have got a series of candles going up. Okay, and you've got again this three candle combination that starts with candle one. Now this time is the opposite. You have got a big bullish candle called candle one that opens here and closes there. So... What it's telling you is that the market is bullish, it's pushing the stock up, it wants to, go, wants to go up. But what happens is the next day, it gaps up. Again, there's a gap, and you have got, again, that indecision small candle. Like, okay, now I'm so bullish, but now I'm here, I'm not sure if I want to go higher. Or should I go down? I'm not sure. There's indecision. And this candle can, again, be bullish or bearish, doesn't matter, but we want it to be small relative to the previous candles that are big. That's candle number two. And candle number three would be a gap down, and this time it's a bearish candle, where now the market says, you know what, I've decided I'm going down. Boom! So that's a reversal down. So once you see this pattern, you can put a sell, a stop limit order, could be five cents below this candle, and a, a stop loss, a buy stop order, five cents above that candle. So there's a buy, uh, there's a sell, Stop limit order. There's a buy, which is a, which is your stop loss, and the next day if it gets lower, it gets triggered and you take the trade all the way down. So that's how this pattern works. Again, ideally, uh, highest probability is that when this appears uh, on a downtrend uh, during a temporary rally on the downtrend, and it's 
finding some kind of resistance over here. So it's always good to use these candlesticks in combination with support and resistance lines and not by themselves in isolation. So let's take a look at um, some examples over here. Okay. So again, this is an uptrend. Or the 50 is above the 150, in fact the 20 is above the 40, so it's a short-term and medium-term uptrend. But what you have is you have a temporary uh, series of candles going down, a temporary dip. And then you have got this morning star over here, right? So you've got this bearish candle. Usually I prefer the bearish candle to be, you know, um, like has have a bigger body, but that's fine as well, no problem. And then we have got this small little candle, which I mentioned, right after a little gap down over here. So market wants to go down, but now it's undecided. And the next day it says, okay, I've decided I'm going back up again, right? Um, so you've got a white um, bullish candle over here that closes more than 50% uh, above the range of this candle over there. So, and it closes above the 50 moving average, which is a bullish signal. And once you have that, you could actually put your buy order over here. The stop loss over there. And the next day, if it gets higher, it gets triggered and you're in the trade. Okay? So that's how it goes. And where it lands, no one knows. Okay? Ah. Do we find one over here? Now, this is a bit of a different case. Okay, now. Uh, first of all, see if you can spot the morning star pattern. Can you spot the morning star pattern? Morning star means bullish, going up, okay? Okay, if you look closely, you'll see it here. There, that's your morning star. Uh, these three candles over here. Okay, so first you have your candle one, which is the big bad bearish candle, okay? You have got your indecision candle, like, uh, I don't know where I'm going. Right, there's a slight gap down, and you've got a bullish candle that now closes above 50% of this guy's range over there. All right, okay, so series of candles going down, and then we have got this three candle combination. You can put a buy order there, five cents above, stop loss, five cents below. Next day gets triggered, takes the trade up. Okay, now you may be saying to me, Adam, didn't you say that it must be uh, ideally on an uptrend? Right, you said highest probability is must be on an uptrend. Isn't it a downtrend? Right, it's below the 50 moving average, blah blah blah. Yes, this is called a counter trend trade. So you can use bullish candles uh, on a counter trend trade as well. That means to say, uh, you, you take a bullish long entry, even though it's a downtrend, but it is oversold on the downtrend. Oversold. And what do you mean by oversold? Now, this is more taught during the WA professional course, but I'd like to share a bit over here. Uh, oversold basically means that it's on a downtrend, but it's at the bottom of the downtrend, and we're expecting a mean reversion back up. Now, of course, uh, when it goes up, it may not last. It could still continue the downtrend, right? Because it's part of a bigger downtrend, but we're taking the short-term uh, bounce back to the mean, okay? Back to the mean. And how do we know it's safe to take? Well, um, one of the things I use is I use the Bollinger Bands. Can you see this thing called the Bollinger Bands? The Bollinger Bands, um, it's in my video on technical indicators actually. So uh, when you have the price coming down very strongly on a downtrend, right, and it kind of like hits the lower Bollinger Bands, and at the same time you can see the stochastics are oversold, this tells you that the price is oversold. That means it's ready for a bounce back up. And the Bollinger Bands, the lower bands act like a support and the upper bands act like a resistance, right? Can you see it's a resistance over there, right? So it's, okay, it's a support over here. So indeed, this morning star is finding a support over here when it is oversold. So you can actually buy to take a trade up. Now I have to say this is a bit more risky than uh, trend following. Trend following means you buy on the uptrend, you follow the trend. This is your buying on the downtrend, but it's because you're taking what we call a counter trend mean reversion back to the mean. So it's a bit more risky, but we do it as professional traders. Yeah. But if you're not as experienced, you may want to skip this uh, particular example. Okay, 
So here's a, here's an evening star. Can you find an evening star over here? There's an evening star. Okay, so that's candle one, which is bullish. You get the indecision candle. I don't know where I'm going. And then you got a, the third bearish candle. I'm going down, baby, right? Okay, good. Goes down. So again, notice that it's appearing at a resistance, um, which is denoted by, again, by this upper Bollinger Bands. Again, you can watch the video on technical indicators if you're not too sure about that. So it is finding resistance over there. And again, notice I'm shorting on the uptrend. So this is a counter trend trade where I want to short, you know, make some money as it's going down and get out before the trend continues. So I can, I can only short on an uptrend if it's at the very top and if it's overbought. And I know it's overbought because the stochastic, which is an oscillator, it's right here above 80 level, which is overbought. So I'm, it's a high chance it's going to come down. Right? So this is, again, is a counter trend trade. The last pattern we're going to look at is a very common pattern. It's called the engulfing pattern. So first you have got the uh, bullish engulfing, which is a bullish pattern. So candles come down. And you see a small bearish candle. Now again, how small is small, right? Well, small is relative to the next guy, okay, which is big. Yeah? So we see a small uh, bearish candle. And the next day, we see a huge bullish candle that totally engulfs or is bigger than this entire candle, right? It's like it, this guy swallowed this guy up. You think you're bearish, I'm more bullish than you, I'm going to take you over, right? So once you've got this guy, you can see a possible reversal. Again, ideally happens at a support level, support level on an uptrend. Or it could be on a downtrend, but it's oversold. Right, could be you're using capitulation strategy or it's a parabolic uh, long strategy. Now, uh, the large bullish candle, its body, right, the body should engulf the body of the bearish candle. Now, if you if you read different textbooks, go to different websites, there, there's a slight of a different there, there are different definitions. Like there are some people that say that well. This, the, this candle's body has to engulf the entire range of the candle. That means the two shadows have to be inside the body as well. That's a really strict definition. For me, I, I'm not that strict. As long as this body um, engulfs this body, to me, that's a bullish engulfing. Okay, so the bearish engulfing is the opposite. You have a series of up candles. And then you've got a small bullish candle. The body's over there. And the next day, you have a huge bearish candle that swallows or engulfs the entire body of this candle. Right? If you're more strict, you want to say it engulfs the entire range. Okay? And then it's going to go down. We want some kind of resistance over there. Okay? And ideally, it's part of a bigger downtrend. Or it could be on an uptrend, but it's overbought at, it, at the top. Okay? Hitting the Bollinger Bands and the stochastics are overbought. That can also work as a counter trend trade again. So here's an example. Can you find the bullish engulfing? I'll give you a minute. Pause the video if you want to. Take a look. Okay, so did you find this one? That's a bullish engulfing. And that's a beautiful one because why? It's on an uptrend. 50 is above the 150. 20 is above the 40. So uptrend, making a temporary dip on the uptrend. And it's hitting the 50 moving average, which acts as a support. Beautiful. Put a buy order, buy order there. Stop loss there. So that's my entry buy. That's my stop loss. Next day gets triggered. Boom, I'm in the trade. Beautiful. Where else? Um, there, that's a bullish engulfing. Can you see that? Although this is not as powerful. Well, it's powerful, but... It's, there's no clear support. There's no clear support, right? So, like I said, it's not just the candlestick, it's the location that's important. So, I like the support there. But it is on an uptrend, okay? So, you could take it, but I prefer some kind of support, like a 50 moving average support that's supporting, like this kind of support over there, some kind of support over there. That would be ideal, right? 
Um, can you see a one white soldier? That's a one white soldier pattern. Can you see that? Right. Remember the one white soldier. Go revise that. So that could be an indication is going higher. Um, where else do you find one white soldiers? Any more one white soldiers? Can't find any more. But this is a one black crow. Right, this is a one black crow goes down a bit. But again, um, although it's a one black crow, right, I wouldn't short it there. Why? Because it's neither here nor there. I won't short it because it's on an uptrend. So I do not want to short on an uptrend. I'm going against the trend. But I could if it was at the top of the uptrend, right? If it's overbought. But in this case, it's not overbought. Yeah, I mean, I did put in the Bollinger Bands. I did put in the Stochastics. I could, but from experience, I can see it's not really overbought. Overbought means the price goes up till it's like parabolic all the way up here. And, you know, you know it's going to crash, right? And over here, you see a one black crow or a, an evening star. You know, and Stochastics is overbought above 80 and you got... Uh, is above the or at the upper Bollinger Bands. You could do a short as well. Okay. All right. So to summarize, it's important to know when to use candlesticks. Candlestick patterns must always be analyzed in the context of the price trend. So don't just go long when you see a bullish candlestick pattern. Please go long only when the bullish candlestick patterns appears at the support of an uptrend. So you want to see the overall trend is up. Higher highs, higher lows, 50, moving average above 150, okay? And you see the bullish candlestick pattern maybe somewhere here, somewhere here, where it is at a support level. So the support could be a trend line, it could be a moving average. Boom, take it high probability. Or you could also go long on a bullish candlestick pattern if it's found at the bottom of a downtrend. So it's a downtrend over here, right, downtrend over here like that, and then it goes down and you're at the, the bottom of the downtrend and you see this bullish pattern over there, you can go long and you're taking a counter trend trade because you're, you're buying against the trend, hoping to buy and then go up a bit and exit here before it, it collapses again. So you're just taking this quick profit over here. Now, how do you know it's at the bottom it's going to bounce? Well, we look at things like divergence. For example, at this point, if you have a bullish uh, divergence pattern, a bullish reversal pattern, bullish divergence reversal pattern, yeah, you could take it, all right? Or it could be a capitulation strategy, right? Where the, uh, the Williams percentage R show that it's oversold. Or it's, uh, you know, the stochastics is oversold below 20 uh, it's at the lower Bollinger Bands, yeah? So this is taught at more of the professional trader's level. Uh, if you're not comfortable going against the trend, it's fine at this time, okay? But just to let you know, it exists. You know, that's what we do as professionals. Okay, um, and finally, we go short when we see a bearish candlestick pattern only if it appears at the resistance of a downtrend. So again, this is following the trend. You see the overall trend is going down, like that. Maybe 50 below the 150, 20 below the 40, confirmed downtrend. And you see uh, the bearish candlestick pattern here at the temporary rally. And it's hitting some kind of resistance, like a moving average or a trend line. You can do a short and write the trend down. Okay? Or you could short a bearish candlestick pattern at the top of an uptrend. So it's an uptrend like that. And at the top, you see this bearish pattern. And you could short it. But again, again, you're selling against the trend. It's more risky, only done if you've got a lot of experience. And you only want to do it if it is overbought. Okay, overbought. And again, there are ways to tell. We use Bollinger Bands to see there's a resistance stochastics above 80, so on and so forth, okay? And then you short it all the way down. Now, just be aware of something. When you see a trend like this, like that, very nice uptrend, and you see a bearish pattern over here, don't short it because, again, you're shorting against the trend. 
And normally trends that move 45 degrees up tend to continue. All right? So even if it goes down a bit, you're going to get killed later on. What we want to see is we see a 45 degree angle like that. And then suddenly the trend goes 90 degrees up. Parabolic. Usually when that happens, it is not sustainable. It is overbought and that's when it appears. Ta-da! Bearish pattern, short the guy all the way down back to the trend line. This takes experience again. So again, don't do this unless you feel that you're ready for it. Yeah. Okay, if you've got any questions, please send me an email. Please let me know how I can help. And uh, with that, I conclude this lesson on candlestick patterns.